let's discuss in more details all sorts of irregularities you may see during the tracking on the example of this case um, there are 16 how many station beacons and uh, 38 workers so in this case only walking number 16 was walking around and let's see all kind of jumps or omissions of tracking and the source of it so let me uh, continue or see so there was a uh, there was a mission so it produced uh, around 4 Hertz update rate but as you see uh, for so this is around 1 meter uh, not one around but between the dots there was 1 meter so over 3 meters there was no tricking what's the reason there could be several it's uh, e even impossible to say without deep analysis what was the reason uh, now first of all uh, it could be and most likely it was an abstraction of uh, station beacons serving this area uh, or, or mobile beacon from the station beacons uh, since uh, service zones were switched off so we cannot know for sure uh, which beacon uh, beacons were serving in this area uh, but it could be either this one or it could be even this one or this one now the whole point is that during this area during this time um, uh, their mobile beacon didn't see uh, the station beacons and the system basically filtered out uh, their measurements or even didn't have them if uh, the abstraction was so strong the second uh, possibility was uh, noise it's very noisy environment um, and this is why the system may detect this and uh, when the trilateration is not able to uh, de determine the location basically filters out this is raw data we have a so-called real-time player which can be enabled and uh, so this is real-time player enabled and uh, in this case this will be populated with the data it will be uh, interpolation data but very precise interpolation so it means that if you analyze it uh, not in real time but let's say with the delay of one to five seconds or even once per one, once a day then the system uh, or the data you will be getting will be significantly better significantly but this is raw data well, let's continue further okay so it's moving tracking is fine as you see there is a concrete uh, so most likely it's serving is being served by this uh, station beacons now it's moving and uh, and it's been tracked okay let's pay attention to this so uh, for example in this case we recommended uh, that uh, the mobile beacon would be placed on the shoulder closer to the edge uh, why because there is a uh, head and the neck and the neck would be blocking a large sector towards uh, let's say potential station beacons in that direction so there, this mobile beacon would be able to see only everything on the left and uh, pretty large area not you know 180 degrees but uh, pretty large sector would be blocked uh, if you move it closer uh, to the end of the shoulder the angle of blocked uh, sector would be lower so it means that their potential tracking would be better of course on the left shoulder, okay, it was left shoulder, so on the right shoulder, uh, there is another sensor attached to this one. So this is why they are both receiving in order to, it's like MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. In this case, it's multiple input because they're getting the signal. So two inputs in order to uh, combat their abstraction produced by their, uh, the neck and their head of the walker. Uh, itself or himself so okay okay this is a left uh, view on the same okay now you see it disappeared why disappeared again there could be two reasons or well, let's say multiple reasons but uh, two major ones it's abstraction or the noise 
uh, for us now it's even uh, difficult to detect was what was the reason uh, for abstraction we already recommended position the station beacons as correctly and as closely following our recommendation as possible and place them about beacons as closely uh, to our recommended way as possible this is good uh, but kind of average good you see it's still very close to the neck it must be further in order to make the sector uh, blocking uh, by the neck itself uh, smaller and the quality of tracking would be improved okay the person is moving the tracking is good uh, let's see uh, the next Okay, so this is how the station beacons are placed. They are placed well. Uh, you see, it's even closer. Uh, uh, so there, okay. You see, there was some, some, something. Now, first of all, there was a small jump. The system tried to filter out, uh, but the system didn't have enough data because, according to all the data available, the person could move so quickly to this area because there are some limits. You can limit the speed of the person. In this case, uh, uh, you will have fewer of these jumps, but they will no, never be zero of these jumps. And this is an important element, uh, so-called false negative and false positive. If we do too many filters, there will be too many blocks like this. If we relax filters, there will be too many jumps like this. So there's always an optimal in settings, uh, in filtering settings, and many other settings. In the modem and the uh, map settings, um, which will produce the optimal tracking between too many uh, omissions and too many jumps. But it's not avoidable uh, completely. Uh, you can only minimize. And with the right settings, you have very minimum uh, number of them. Uh, but it's not avoidable completely ever. Uh, okay, let's let's continue tracking. So the tracking is back, and you see, from time to time, uh, their mobile beacon may be even stuck. What's the reason? Well, remember that we have been getting this data over a large distance, so it was like 2,000 kilometers away, and we were Zoom connected and TeamViewer connected. So for us, it's very difficult to say. Was it because uh, there was no tracking or was it because we simply had a very poor connectivity? And may, we may have very poor connectivity because, uh, again, due to basic uh, internet uh, delays and some you know, lost pocket, uh, packets of data. It could be, again, system, but with high probability in this case, it was also internet delay. Uh, it could be also Windows delay because it was running on Windows machine and sometimes Windows uh, does something very weird. So look at there how the station beacons were placed. So there was electricity charging. Since uh, the, uh, the plant works in negative temperatures, uh, customers asked us to remove the battery. So there's no battery inside whatsoever. It's typical super beacon, but without battery. And it's super beacon outdoor, so it's uh, protected against dust and moisture. Um, but since it does have the battery, so it must always be uh, USB powered. So that's how it was implemented there. So the person is moving. Okay, you see there was a jump, uh, but in this case jump, uh, I would guess and with high probability it was a handover jump. Uh, most probably the tracking was uh, split between this service zone and this service zone. And during the handover, the system uh, dropped quite a few um, uh, location updates. And you see, there was a slightly misalignment. So there was a jump uh, and shift between this and this. So uh, this was our, our work in progress. So we didn't uh, tune uh, their submaps so that to minimize these kind of jumps. It's not a big deal for this particular case, uh, but the things could be better. So their submaps could be aligned better. Simply it takes significantly more time and it has not been t uh, done at this stage just yet. You see, 
once again uh, the system disappeared or the mobile beacon disappeared for for some time and then appeared back uh, it filtered out some but it still had uh, one jump if uh, the post processing is applied this and this would be basically filtered out and a very nice smooth track would be produced which may at the same time and filters out these jumps and uh, make uh, the, the tracking even more precise because it would it, uh, it would minimize potential noise that is always there uh, because we know that the object itself is not noisy so it's not uh, jumping uh, or mm, jittering when moving uh, so it's a person and uh, by knowing this uh, it's possible to apply post-processing and make it not only nice and smoother but even more precise than the raw data so this is the environment pretty you see this is pretty uh, pretty complex area because these station beacons are obviously not seen because this will be but this will completely abstract this beacon so let's see whether it will be tracking at all i wouldn't be surprised if there's no tracking completely no tracking because uh otherwise you would need to install additional beacons here like here additionally and track only in this small tiny corridor and uh, usually there's a trade-off you need to decide whether you really want to track with high accuracy in this particular small area or you know that people may not move away from this so they may be either this or there and in this area they they have no other choice either to be there or be in this small corridor or away so let's see oh, oh see you see there was a yellow yellow uh, sign for a fraction of a second si system is trying to say okay trilateration does work there are some abstractions something so it's trying to detect okay it's still getting tracking maybe the visibility was still there because we asked people to put them pretty high so it means that when the station beacons are high so it means that they uh, for example if the station beacons is here and the mobile is here so they see them from the top so a potential abstraction uh, uh, shadows are smaller but if you put the station beacons on let's say three meters then the potential shadow would be larger so pay attention to this and place the station beacons accordingly okay some minor emissions some minus uh, block uh, jumps but uh, again very very typical behavior everything is good okay okay there was a jump clear jump uh, due to whatever reasons difficult to say most likely uh noise some some sudden noise since we have a delay of uh, half a second or second over the internet it's even difficult to assign a noise from audio to the jump uh, but most likely there was a noise which first caused to the jump then it co uh, it led to some omissions because the system is trying to uh prevent from providing the wrong data when it's able to uh, detect that the data is wrong okay you see now now it's pretty poor uh, tracking uh, again the same sources of uh, incorrect tracking noise uh, abstractions Th these are the two primary primary all the rest uh, could be you know pretty minor in majority of cases uh remember that the mobile beacon was not placed perfectly so the guys are just learning how to wear um so it meant that tracking could be better if the mobile beacons uh would be placed or in this case one mobile beacon would be placed more properly but it was placed like it was placed now let's continue so overall the distance is around 60 meters and we know that in some areas uh tracking is pretty poor simply because there's no way to provide tracking because there's so strong abstraction but it's not this area it's pretty open area it could be noisy very noisy uh, but in terms of abstraction it's kind of okay it's pretty 
open. You see, there are far more demanding areas. Uh, okay, tracking is ongoing. Mm, okay, difficult to say what was the reason for this particular omission, but uh, let's see. You see, there was a slight jump. This is another example of, uh, let's say, of our unfinished job. This is misalignment, so it means that this submap and this submap, they are not aligned. So this is called M1, M2, uh, so oranges, as we call them in quotations. So you may align, uh, spend a bit more time and align them better. So this was a work in the progress, so we didn't align well here and we didn't align, align well here. So the tracking was nice, but when the tracking was moving from this submap, so I really assume and believe that this submap and this submap, so there was a handover zone of uh, two, three, four meters. So in this point, most likely, their mobile beacon can move from this service zone to the service zone of this and uh, jumped during this time. So basic misalignment. And now it will be moving to far more, um, let's say, difficult area because there's no way you can track using any technologies when the beacons are not visible. Visible means physically visible in terms of radio, in terms of ultrasound, in terms of uh, light. It all depends of what technologies you are using. Since we are using radio plus ultrasound, yes, we do have radio connectivity. It's not direct line of sight radio connectivity, but we don't use that radio co connectivity for uh, location measurement. We are using ultrasound. So radio uh, we are getting because it's scattered over the building. But for example, uh, if ultrawide band would be used, ultrawide band wouldn't be able to go through this concrete uh, because it's just too thick, uh, too, uh, producing too much uh, loss. And ultrasound obviously is not able go to go through these materials. So let's, let's see what the tracking will be when the person will be behind this. And this is why we are always saying, place the stationary beacons far, I mean, above. In this case, okay, there's, there's still, okay, there was a ch some jumps, jumps, the same source. Most, most likely there was some noise, you see, there, there was some, you know, clinking. Uh, uh, but the rest, if you place them high, then the chances of abstractions will be lower. Not zero, the person may crawl, for example. And if it goes to the shadows of these uh, concrete blocks, there will be no way to track the person. But now the person is, okay, some, some uh, drop, another drop, and you see this could produce, okay, now it is producing. It's very difficult to say which one exactly is being blocked. Maybe this one, because it's kind of behind, and you, you see there are, there are some walls or some, some obstacles which are higher than the person. And uh, very likely, those are producing some obstructions. But since this is kind of in the middle, it would be also possible that some of those emissions are part of uh, handovers. Handovers between different submaps. So some of them could be improved, like this one, uh, or maybe even partially this one. Uh, but many are not because it's non line of sight. And this is very, very difficult again. So this is taller than the person. So if the person is behind this, or let's say between, now the station beacons are behind, so these are not yet uh, disturbing. But when it's moving, now it's disturbing, you see? So now it's getting the data and the getting the measurement, but most likely not a direct line of sight. So this is, could be, once again, uh, two things. First of all, uh, emissions due to non-line of sight, due to, you know, blocks placed there. And second, uh, because uh, the stationary beacons and the submaps are not completely aligned and there was a jump due to misalignment. So very typically it's not a single thing, it's a combination. Non-line of sight, noise, misalignment.
Okay, you see, there was a mission, a uh, couple of jumps, and some omissions. No, well, you've got the point, I believe, already. Uh, when system is not able to measure, we can discuss and agree. With some customers, we agree, okay, we show everything. With some customers, we show only what we believe is the best to show. But we also provide the raw data, like uh, distances. So it means that in many cases, in uh, post-processing, you may even recover significantly more that is measured here because the raw data is available and it's possible uh, by having only, let's say, one of the distances to estimate the location pretty well, knowing the history, knowing the raw data, uh, the raw distances, and knowing the IMU data, which is also available. So uh, post-processing, in general, produce significantly better results, uh, particularly because you know more and you know uh, the future. For this mobile beacon, the mobile beacon doesn't know the future. But for example, uh, at this point, you already know the future. So this is the future. So it's very easy to produce in post-processing line, which would be very precise, following, not the line, but the curve, uh, following this, and at the same time, not having this. At the time when it's measured, it's impossible because the person may move this direction, this direction, or any kind of direction. But when we know already, uh, whatever, five, ten seconds uh, after. So it's pretty easy to provide uh, very detailed uh, coverage, uh, very detailed tricking. Okay, it's finishing uh, the tricking. This is why uh, we, pl we ask to place the beacons uh, on around four meters and their mobile beacon was on the neck. So it was whatever, 1.6 meters around um, in order to minimize the shadows. So uh, I don't see where the station beacons would be like this 58, 12, they're somewhere there. Uh, but for example, if the person goes just next to these blocks, and uh, if those blocks were somewhere there, so in the service zone of, uh, of those beacons, th then the person will be physically behind the wall of, of these blocks. There will be no tracking. Even worse, in some cases, there would be uh, uh, faulty tracking uh, or false tracking. Uh, how to avoid this? Well, again, place beacons so that uh, if you expect non-line of sight, then you place the beacons, station beacons, uh, so that uh, the, those line of sights will be not um, abstracted. So in this case, you could do over full overlapping submaps. Okay, this was too long, but you could build uh, submaps from this area and to this area. So it meant that if the tracking is here, the system is measuring uh, from these beacons and from these beacons. And the system is able, in the majority of cases, to detect that something is wrong. Then it drops out uh, those measurements and takes only these measurements. If uh, measurements are matching, then it take, it's taking both. If there is abstraction behind, then it drops out measurements from these station beacons and using only these station beacons. So it totally depends on the case. So this is why there is no... Um, Solution for all cases. For people tracking, it's one solution. For drones, it's another solution. For forklifts, it's a slightly different solution. And for particular implementation, it's always a particular implementation depending on what you want to achieve in terms of accuracy, in terms of robustness, in terms of investment, in terms of uh, what you'll be tracking people or forklifts, where you can place the beacons, where you cannot place the beacons. So there are many elements. Uh, but all those elements are known, uh, we've done this many times, so we can advise and you can do it by yourself, simply by following our recommendations. So let's finish the tracking and uh, hopefully based on the example of this particular case, it becomes clear what to do and how to interpret, like in this case, uh, how to interpret uh, either emissions 
or jumps or misalignments. Thank you very much.